Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And for real, we did not expect to do another video. Oh my God, we didn't. Freaking, freaking Kevin Smith and freaking He-Man. We did the one yesterday and then we, we knew we were gonna go on Yellow Flash for like a little bit. And then before we got on Yellow Flash, uh, we noticed that that Star Wars girl had posted he had done a video. And this time he actually just named us by name. Yeah, he name checked us in this live stream yesterday, and this was literally minutes before we went on right. to Yellow Flash's stream. So we have to. So of course now because he did that, we have to. We have to at least be able to say what we have to say in our defense, or you know whatever, because he's the one. Again, if you look at all these times, we stopped talking about it so many times, and here comes Kevin Smith dragging us into it again, and then yelling about it. And at the end of the day, what did we do? All we did was post a rumor we heard. And somehow it's all our fault. Yeah, it is. And he actually admits that he used us as kind of a meat shield. Yes. You know, and he was kind of so flippant about like, well, you know, whatever. I, I basically, I had, I had to lie. I had to, I had to, oh no, he doesn't admit the lying. I had to drag them because if I didn't drag them, the bigger spoilers were going to get we'll out. We'll talk about. But he also said he's never been mean to us. Fuck and later admits he used us, you know. As a meat shield. Yes. So, yeah. But he's never mean to yeah. us. He's okay. been dismissive and a, and a total, and it drug us into it on the media several times okay. for attention for himself, but never been mean. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about that because this, this live stream he did yesterday, it was a Fat Man Beyond podcast, Comic-Con weekend with the voice actor of uh, Orko, RIP. There are going to be spoilers in this video, by the way. It was a very sad event. It was kind of like a wake. Uh, he had turned the comments off pretty quickly into the stream mm -hmm. as as I understand it. Now I popped in for like a minute. I'm like, oh, he's live streaming. I wonder what's going on. I didn't even on. know what was going on. And he did a stream, you know, the other stream he did or other video he did, he was kind of delighting. Uh, he was delighted that people were upset that he killed Adam and he killed Orko and all stuff. He's like, oh yeah, this is great, man. I killed him twice. I killed him mm -hmm. twice. And he viewed that as a win. Well, I, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I, I, I'm going to tell you, this is what their faces were like throughout the duration of this like two and a half hour live stream. And it was probably designed originally to be a celebration of what they thought was going to be a very well-received mm -hmm. series. Oh, but according to him, it is with that face. And it wound up being more of a wake for... You know, they, they know they done fucked up. Let's, right. let's put that It right. was bad enough he, he brought our name into it twice um, because he normally avoids mentioning us. And uh, he, he would say about those people. But he brought our name, our name into it twice. Um, it's been called worse. Now, the second time he brought the name into it, I actually, people were like, Matt, I actually thought it was pretty funny. It's a, he's yeah, like, whatever. He's like, don't tell anyone, Clownfish. I, always thought, I thought that was That's, kind of funny. I mean, we have a sense of humor. Hey, look, the only reason we got the tip... Uh, well, then we got the shaft later. The only reason we got <laughs> the tip that we got uh, again. But it from, wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. There was no loop. Uh, the only reason that we got that was because we had had insider information before on what's going on with the animation. And, you know, we had somebody come to us that was like, I know what they're planning to do with He-Man. And, oh, my God, this is a disaster. We were, we were trying to warn you. Yeah. Everybody that whoever was involved with this show that this was going to be a disaster. Yeah, like if this, if this, this is true, and you had plenty of time to change it. This won't play well, or at least you could have changed the marketing where you're upfront about what it was. Yes. And you know, instead of that, we're now somehow, even though we weren't the ones that made the decisions, we aren't the ones that made the no. changes. It's all our fault somehow. And oh, no, <laughs> and now it's moved beyond all our fault to the, normally that all the fans are terrible people and they're just shitty fans who don't understand He Man Fair. and and Kevin Smith does because he used to watch it in 1981 and then and then he corrected himself. No, he watched it when he was a t and now he's a teenager and he didn't watch he it. And he hate it. it. No, he, he said he thought about hate watching it. Oh my god! Because it was for babies. Stop talking. And it's okay. He made it for not babies. I don't know. But before we get into it any further, before we get into it any further, uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 200. 12, 215. So he basically called everybody babies? He said, yeah. Fans he said, are babies? Yeah, in the Variety article, he basically said it was a, a show for babies. He's like, it's a show for babies. He was a teenager, and uh, he almost hate-watched it. So he went from being, hey, I'm super fan Kevin Smith, and it's like, again, the dude is digging himself a deeper hole. Oh, I've got to open his mouth. He's trying to do Stop damage talking. control, but it's like every time he does, he's actually got to like walk back 
He doesn't call them lies. Just stop. Uh, stop talking, dude. Just Not stop you, talking. Kevin Smith. But yeah, he said he, he would, you know, he was a young teenager during He-Man's run. He wasn't exactly a diehard fan. I almost hate watched it because it was like the show is for babies. And he goes, they got the most badass villain and then no one ever died. And and so now what the, 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 the takeaway is that he made a new he made a new show for people that were adults now. And there were stakes. And everybody died. There always were stakes. And everybody dies. All these people, they pretty much, a lot of people do die. But because the original one was for babies. The 2000, why does everybody keep forgetting 2002? I don't know. Cause, well, because because they know 2002 is a better show. 2002 was, they were able to do, the reason they couldn't do that, as I understand, it's the same reason that G.I. Joe, you know, it was the uh, the regulations on children's television back then. That's why they had to have the PSA at the end. Mm -hmm. And that's why in G.I. Joe, every time they shoot down a Cobra plane, they always have parachutes. Right, there's a reason. You know, they all have laser guns. They never actually hit each other. So, and same with Transformers. Like, nobody actually died in Transformers until the movie where they freaking killed everybody off because well, they could. Well, that's why She-Ra, too, her stuff would, she, her, would transform. Her, her sword, sword would transform because she couldn't actually stab, stab anybody. somebody. Yeah. 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 I mean, she kicked people and everything else. She literally kicked their ass, you know? So, he's just already he's already doing that. And, and now it's moved from just him hating, well, he still hates on us, but now it's moved to fandom in general. Um, and now they're attacking everyone, which we said would happen. Yeah. So this, this live stream was an unmitigated disaster. And there, I, I, I'm telling you as, you know, we've, we've had this channel for what, four or five years now? Mm, yes. Uh, we've been covering this kind of pop culture stuff for about four years. It's and been a long God. it's been a while. It's been, there is something going on behind the scenes. Uh, there's absolutely something going on behind the scenes and this is damage control. And this look on these guys' faces this tells you everything. This is a, a very different Kevin Smith than the Kevin Smith who was giddy about how he got to kill off Orko, was giddy just a day or two ago about how he got to kill off uh, Adam twice. Let me, let me do it twice. And this whole thing was was him going into you know uh, self-defense mode, and it should have been a stream about, like, hey, we're going to answer your questions. He spent the majority of it uh, deflecting criticism, and as he does that, he's actually causing more problems, but they already committed to, to doing this. Well, thing, here's a couple you know? things I talked about. One, they mentioned us and he said he would not apologize to us, uh, which I never expected him to. He wouldn't apologize to us because, um, he, that he didn't lie. Uh, he didn't lie. Okay. He didn't lie. So we said he man steps aside. He, no, you're right. He, he, he man's pushed aside. So I guess that one word is the semantics. He man still steps aside. Same outcome. Um, and Tila I doesn't have a girlfriend. Well, tell that to literally everyone else. Tell it to Grace Randolph, who was like, it's very obvious. And she's pushing for Tila to be LGBT, right. by the way. But she's like, it is very obvious in the first episode that that's where they were planning to go with it or whatever. Well, now you've left it in a queer baiting zone, which is even worse. <laughs> it's because even worse. It's even worse because if you've been around any of these shows, which we've covered multiple times. Voltron. That gets people, She-Ra at first. Well, they, yeah. they did finish at the end, but that. <laughs> they climaxed yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, that's that's the problem people have with the, the, the queer baiting. So basically, you wanted to make her a lesbian because diversity reasons and Netflix mandates most likely. Um, so. Your answer to that was well, we're going to we're not gonna actually we're not gonna actually like you know double down on it. So now instead of just making the old fans mad, now you just made everyone mad. Like you literally anybody, you've made everyone angry. Yeah. It's like it's like with Rise of Skywalker. You left uh, the Last Jedi and you thought well we'll backtrack it now and now you old fans were already mad. Now you pissed off all your new fans and now no one was happy and it bombed. Yeah. So now you've made no one happy. So, but we didn't lie about either of those things. So he's basically still implying we're liar. What he would apologize for was basically for dragging it out. So basically I'm apologizing for the fact that I got caught. So yeah, he name checks us in this live stream. Kept... He knows damn well who we are. Um, because well, yeah, he says so. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of the uh, the points he's trying to deflect are, are issues that we brought up. And again, we this came down to, with this whole series, managing expectations. You know, if they had gone into this, like we said on Yellow Flash's stream, and they said, this is an alternate universe, mm -hmm. He-Man, right? This is a what-if scenario. What if He-Man died? What would the rest of the Masters of the Universe do if Skeletor won, He-Man died, whatever? Um, and you led with that, like... Yeah, and that would have been cool, you know? And kept Tila Tila. You totally made Tila Yeah, Tila is not Tila. Uh, if you kept the characters who they were and then led it like that, then it would have worked. And he kept saying over and over again, oh, well, this is for the fans, the love letter to the fans. It takes place right after the old show left off. 
but it it doesn't actually. Yeah, and you know the thing about this this whole situation too is Kevin Smith in this panel, um, and we're going to talk about like the Netflix situation because he kept making it about how you know people were trying to get him fired from Netflix. He's not going to get fired from Netflix because this show's already in the can. It's already done. He already cashed his check. He's moving on to Clerks Three. That's all he's talking mm-hmm. about now is Clerks. He's going to ruin 3. that now. I mean, that's his own thing. Well, that's his own thing. So he, he can, can ruin that all he, he wants. He can do whatever he wants to do, but. He's using the Masters of the Universe branding, supposed to be representing a family-friendly toy brand. Line, a toy line. And he's talking about He-Man eating pussy and dropping the F-bomb repeatedly and kind of throwing shit at, at fans mm-hmm. in a roundabout way. He's trying to be um, diplomatic about it. But if, if he had his, his way, he'd probably get up, you know, stand up on the table and start just flipping everybody off just because he could. Because you can tell he's tired of this shit. The dude looks like shit. Well, yeah, but he don't, looks tired. Don't go there if you if you aren't ready to. You know, we get shit all the time. We get oh my god, we get shit all the time. You would, yeah. And our yeah. comments are still on. I mean, we get shit all the time. Not the level he's getting shit, but we didn't go ruin a a, a, a beloved franchise either. Um, the, the, I love what I love is when he basically said that. The reason he came after us was because, well, he could. Because what happened, according yeah. to him, was that the same day, how 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 ironic and weird, the same day we said about, in a passing, and we had done about the information for a bit, and just in passing had posted it. Um, Somebody else somebody else said that, that Adam died. Now. I never heard that. We never heard it. I never wouldn't heard Wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think that if somebody had said that on Twitter, it would have been, you know, all over the damn place. You know, people have been like, oh, my God, what? You know? Um, and if he ignored that, and if it didn't, and he would be like, well, that didn't become big because I didn't address it. Well, then why the hell did you address ours? To address neither. He said, but I, I couldn't speak to that, but I could speak to what they said. So, basically, I went after them instead. That's he, what he basically said. Yeah, he used us as a meat shield because he was afraid the bigger spoiler was going to come out that Adam died. Now, I did not have – I had a very – bird's eye view of what was going on and the insider was like do you want a script now if i'd gotten a hold of the script i probably could have deduced i don't know what episode it was but i probably could have deduced that adam was gone he was mm-hmm. out of the picture just based on the dialogue uh, i'm like i don't want to be responsible for that for no. so many reasons and in, and here's the thing too he kept saying he i am pretty sure at another point in time he's like aha uh-huh, no one's ever guessed the whole the, the, guessed the story yet no one's even guessed where we're going with this yet yeah he did but, say that but but if, if someone had already posted that Adam died and you're now saying that that had been posted, why did you post later that no one, no one's gotten it right yet? I think somebody might have guessed. They're like, what are they going to do? Like kill He-Man off in the first episode? Nobody be that stupid. Well, you know what you did? You went and ignored that person. If that's just true and someone said that, which I, I still don't know if I buy. If you had ignored that person and, and, and that didn't blow up, why the hell did you talk at us? Because you couldn't stand it is why. You couldn't stand it. You belittled us. Oh, those aren't true. Those aren't true. And it's like, but they were true. They were true. We were, we didn't even tag him in. We were trying to send a warning shot. Like, got it. Rethink if, this if, if it's true. If this is what you're thinking. He also you've got, said, please don't be true. Yeah, please don't be true. Just knowing this fan base, knowing any fan base of any existing franchise, if this is what you're planning on doing, stop. Even if you got to retool it for a year, just stop because mm-hmm. they the, got extra time because of COVID. Yeah, you have, they have extra no time. excuse because the damage done to this franchise, your credibility to Mattel to Netflix is going to be catastrophic. You cannot. Oh. They could have gotten away with it if they had had a couple of even baseline episodes of you know He Man versus Skeletor reintroducing that whole conflict. And then turning things on their ear, but they, well, they didn't because plunge right into it. They didn't because he said it was for the fans right after the original series. And there's all wasn't. these people going, well, it was a reimagining. No, it wasn't. He made that very clear. It was supposed to be uh, right directly after the original series. Well, you're entitled fans expecting it to be for you. He said, it's a love letter to the fans. It is made for the fans of the original show. Repeatedly that was stated. Like, yeah. Specifically to please He-Man fans. How the fuck do you think... Killing off He-Man. And making Tila an unlikable bitch. Making her an unlikable bitch. And then spending all this time bitching about He-Man and Skeletor was going to please fans. Like, this this, this show was for nobody. It's for nobody. It's not for the old school fans. It's not for casuals because there's no baseline. Yeah, there's no lead-in. There's no baseline of, like, 
this is He-Man versus Skeletor. They drop you into it, and the first time you see He-Man, it's not even He-Man, it's Faker. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody understands what the hell is going on. Now, I, want to, I do want to make it clear. I do think that, you know, I don't think... They, he can say he killed Adam twice. They did not show Adam I was dead the second time. Think they Adam's going to come back. Somehow, Sorcerer's going to bring him back, or her powers are going to transfer to Tila. You were joking the other day. Watch what happens, because they keep calling him... they calling them the champion. Bring yeah. your champion. And they keep deliberately doing that. Um, you joked what what is Andra, Andra because she's black, a descendant of King Grayskull, and now she's going to be the new champion with with Tila's sorceress, and then they're together. They're, you know what? That's what you said. Yeah, because you know, as Cal look at this, I'm like, why introduce her at all? She was like a side character, nothing. Oh, to make sure you know she's a lesbian. Too. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, beyond that, but they made sure that like she, Andra is the one who wants to go out there and have adventure and she wants to fight and she wants to be like, you know, go, go, go. And they, they did kind of turn the mythos on here a little bit because, you know, now they're like, Oh, you know, he man is a, again, a mantle. He man is a mantle, and we've seen this in. Well, it kind of was though. It was because we had Gray Skull, and we had Hero, and we had that. But um, they even go back, and they've got like you know, it was, it was kind of cool to see they had even one dar and all that you know. In no, they definitely do put fan things in there, like and, and old characters, but they just treat things in such a terrible way. They put a lot of fan service in there from the toy. Uh, perspective, but they can't get the basics right, like the personalities of the core characters. Right, Tila is not an inseparable bitch. No, Tila in two thousand two, He Man was done so much better. She, yeah, and they keep him and Geller keep going. Well, if you were a real fan, you'd know Tila was important. No we, shit, we have said that. Way before Kevin Smith even showed up, we have brought that up in regards to the Shira situation multiple times. Um, you know, whatever question that, but Tila was, you know. She had honor, and she was a strong character, and she was a good friend. She would not have been like, my best friend just died, but it's all about me. You know, yeah. I'm going to leave the king. The king doesn't know, and he's going to be upset his son died, and he was lied to. But it's all about me and my feelings. It's all about me. It's all about me. Like every other insufferable bullshit, strong in quotes, female character, Hollywood keeps shoving in our face. And as a woman, I'm so fucking tired of it, and I'm so insulted, because women are strong in many, many ways. I'm tired of this basically take the hair cut off, and it's a dude, and you're saying it's a woman, and it's, oh, yeah, right, right. it's all about me and my feelings. <laughs> it's all about me. But anyway, go, going back validate to... Validate me. Validate me. That's that's basically it, validate me. Going back to the teal thing, yeah, because I... I, I firmly believe they're going to give... Because they build up like her biggest fear is to be too successful, to be too awesome. Let, yes! So, oh so they're going to finally, because they've been teasing it for decades, you know, and they never had a chance to, to go there in filmation. They never had a chance to go there in 2002. They're going to make Teela the Sorceress. Which is fine. Which, People want to see that. Okay, fine. But uh, with real Teela, not this fake yeah, Teela. Yeah, fake Teela. So they'll probably give her the snake armor and all that stuff like she, because she started out in the comics when I was a kid. I was confused when, because I actually did... <laughs> It's Fila. It's all about her feelings. Fila. Fila. There so we go. Fake Tila, it's Fila. Fila. Go ahead. When you were a kid. Sorry. When I was little, little, when He-Man first came out, before the cartoon show, and I was very little, but, you know, they came with the books, mm -hmm. and I was confused. I love those books. Tila was, they had, they were storybooks. Before their comic books, they were little storybooks. Yeah. And He-Man was just some rando barbarian, and Tila was the sorceress, and she had the snake armor and all that. So then I'm like, okay, well, she's the goddess, she's the sorceress, whatever. And you could never find her, actually. She was very hard to find. Yes, I know. Tila's um, always, and, and she's still worth, you know. Yeah, she was very hard to find. People, so for everybody us, wanted Tila, boys and girls. You know, for she wasn't very popular. You could never find Tila. I'd oh, never. God. So then the filmation show comes out, and I'm like, one, she's not wearing the armor. Two, she's not the sorceress. Now, it made more sense when they... They had the sorcerers be like, "Oh, it's my daughter." Da, da, da. But I was, I was completely confused because I'm like, "That's what was in the book." That mm -hmm. she was... How much? I wonder if those books go for more. Uh, they were the ones that came with the uh, the original. Yeah, they had those, and then they had like the the, the right, book and but records the little, and... but the little like the little flip comics were the ones that came with the toys later. I wonder if those books that were the older ones with different story. I'm, I mean, we... just out of curiosity. Uh, well, I mean, if you have if you have the older figures with the the first generation, you know, the first generation with like the eight characters on the back, mm -hmm. like I mean, the first series ones. Yeah, I'm sure. Obviously they, not the. You know, yeah, well, there I'm weren't talking. as many. That's of them. what I'm talking about. There weren't as many of them because you know they started after the cartoon came. Well, they had they started doing the DC comics after that, and then after the cartoon came out, they altered. Yeah, they changed it. Altered it to be more li more like filmation. It wasn't exactly like film. Anyway, anyway. Um, That's what I was meaning. But anyway, where I think they could potentially go with this, and yeah, this is a theory because I don't know. I have no idea. We had insider information at first. We do not now. Is that Tila becomes the sorceress and Adam? 
either comes back and dies again or something, but then they like give the sword to Andra and she becomes Tila's champion. Right. Because it'd be, because it'd be like another one of those things, like, like we saw with uh, the characters in Rise of Skywalker. Well, is she Lando's daughter because she's black. Yeah. Right. I'm like, well, just because you're black doesn't mean you got characters, you know, relatives. Now, this <laughs> like, is, this is uh-huh. pure speculation. So I'm like, yeah, okay. we don't know. So I'm I don't like, think they're to get rid of He Man per se. Well, would they go there? This, because originally they were going to call it the end of the universe. And I'm like, if you go there, if you, bring he-man back again because adam doesn't die but then you've made it clear that if he dies again he die dies like he's gone forever but then they have like a big he-man memorial but andra gets to be andra or something and tila is the new sorceress and they're gonna protect the not castle grayskull you know uh hull of wisdom or whatever God, you thought the first half wasn't going to go well. Let's hope they don't do that. Let's really, really, really. I'm just hoping because hope. Mattel really wants to keep He Man, He Man for their own for brand purposes. But like somebody, like like uh, they were talking about on the show yesterday that they're probably going to lose the, the license to it anyway. Yeah, it's complicated. It's, it is very complicated, which we knew about the Shira situation that it was very, very divided up and complicated. Yeah. Then. So, um, but anyway, back to this thing. One of the other things that he, he thought was interesting, he was saying was. They were like, it's like, oh, not that many people don't like it. So we're going to go to the Rotten Tomatoes element. The Rotten Tomatoes thing was just really, really, really fishy because it was going down, it was going down, it was going down. And then all of a sudden it got locked and then new reviews weren't posting. And it was showing that the numbers were going up in reviews, but then suddenly it was going to the good, but you couldn't read these new reviews. And then now I think it's sitting at like 32% and it doesn't seem like you can do anything with it. Because they kept starting, they started this narrative right off. It's review bombing. It's review bombing because if it's, it's, maybe it's just not good. No, no, it's review bombing. I want to point out again that I have seen concerted campaigns to review bomb things to the good as well. If you're if you're trying to artificially change a score, that's bombing. Shira and Doctor Who come yes. to mind because you when you see you know like you point out with uh, Netflix Shira, you had people come in there just give five stars and go gay rights or lay, yeah. yay lesbians. Yeah, you know, and and those weren't removed because no. you know all five stars are legit, but all the other ones are. Bad. So he called the people upstairs, and I'm thinking he means Netflix or whatever. And they're not worried about reviews. If they're not worried about reviews, why all of a sudden the call out for for Rotten Tomatoes to to suddenly stop and and change things? Yeah. Don't trust Rotten Tomatoes. Whatever you do, don't trust them. They are easily manipulated. But as soon as the studios don't like something, they they hurry up and you know take the voice away from the people that they're supposed to represent to begin with. That is the biggest slip up. Now, that's what tells me that there is so much going on behind the scenes with this show. Mm-hmm. It, besides the look on their faces, the fact they've locked the comments, whatever, he slipped up and he basically told the fans that Netflix doesn't give a shit, you know, what the ratings are, what fans think about things. They're just going to green light. They're going to take your subscriber money and they're going to green light whatever the hell they feel like green light. Well, we are not with cuties. Oh, yeah, cuties was a prime example. But then it's weird because you get shows like Tuka and Birdie, which you think hits every checkbox yeah. that they're looking for but they cancel that one really quickly you know so he's basically like he was trying to make it out like all these he-man fans were trying to get him fired from netflix i'm like well you can't anyway because this shows in a can it's done right animation right. is you know but, so it wasn't us we were not spearheading any of that no, stuff no, we already no. knew this um but he was like oh well netflix said well it's only five or ten thousand people how does netflix know that that's what I want to know. I was like, wait, how does Netflix know it's only five or 10,000 people? Um, I want to point out that on our videos we've done before, we don't get that many. We have a fraction of subscribers that Netflix and Kevin Smith have. Yeah. But we still have 13, 14, 15,000 upvotes agreeing with us, but it's only five to 10,000 people. And I want to know how does Netflix know this? Because you can't review it on Netflix. And if they're going, well, Rotten Tomatoes said there was only this many people review bombing it. Um, that's not most people don't don't go to Rotten Tomatoes. Most people don't go to social media. So based on what you can't tell us on watching it that they don't like it. I think where did this number come from? I think there's a lot of damage control going on behind the scenes. Now, who's not brought into this conversation very often is Mattel. He's like, do you think Mattel would let us kill off He Man and keep him dead? Uh, unless Mattel thought you were doing one thing and you wound up doing something else. I don't know about that because he tagged him in when we said something. Well, they might have been pissed. But They might have been pissed. They I don't like, know. What the fuck are you doing? But, you know, Mattel is not brought up. However, the, according to the, what everybody's talking about in the media was that Mattel came to Kevin Smith. Yeah. So if it, if, it's, if it fucks it up for you, Mattel, sorry, you did it to yourself. This whole, this whole thing, I mean, you want to talk about just the, the Hollywood attitude. 
Kevin Smith lives in L.A., mm -hmm. lives in the L.A. area. He couldn't be bothered. Mattel wanted to talk to him. Mattel, one of the world's largest toy companies, wanted to talk to him. And he couldn't be bothered to drive out to Santa Monica to talk to them about a potentially multi-million dollar deal. Like, dude, I'm too busy to even just drive. But they wanted hour. me so bad they came to my house. They came to well, my house. Well, then, Mattel, what the hell were you thinking? Why the hell would you bring Kevin Smith into this? Now, Why? What was, your, that, was that brain fart based on? So what what's going to happen because you know this is this is how this dude rolls is you know there's going to be all this drama this weekend it will go down the memory hole and about a year or two he will go on his podcast and he will start throwing people under the bus well after after NDAs and after the up. NDA because he has done this repeatedly where he has a really bad working relationship with somebody or a studio or whatever and you find out. You know, he he dishes later Maybe on. Maybe the common denominator is him. What's the common denominator? Um, so he'll he'll be like, yeah, he'll be like, in, like to save face, or no, he'll do it as part of the promotional push for clerks. He'll be like, yeah, I'm one of you guys. I tried telling them. I, I tried well, telling them. Th you know, that's a possibility. We said before, like, why tag them in unless he was trying to say, look, I told you, and and I know he's he's, he's going to be with Netflix, especially. You're held to certain mandates, and I'm sure do we thought it was weird doing a he man when he's toxic masculinity, according to these dumbasses on Twitter. Current year would be very problematic. Yeah. So how do we work around that? So I mean, we might find out. We might find out the whole story. Well, you can't believe anything he says. No, that's no. We've learned that. That is the problem. The problem now is that regardless of what you think of the show, regardless of what you think of it, you know, one way or the other, Kevin Smith's credibility is shot because the guy is walking back. He's getting caught in lies like day after day. He's walking shit back. He's he's just trying to do damage control, and he's actually causing more damage. Um. This was not, this did not go the way they expected it to go. They honestly thought this show was going to be, because they were getting the reviews from the media. And the media's going to kiss your ass to keep the review access. Absolutely. Grace Randolph, when Grace Randolph said, hey, there's a problem, I knew there was a problem because Grace Randolph is pretty progressive. And I'm like, if she's like, mm, I'll have a spoiler review on Friday, but God, I don't know about some of these decisions. And Kevin, you really shouldn't have. Ninety percent of people in the writers' room would have told you not to do that. Yeah, that that, that to me was a huge red flag. Like, because oh, you could even have this premise, and you could execute it well, and it could be like, oh, this is actually a really good. But you know, when you when Teal is your lead, and you don't even get her right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they they the show's fucked. People have mentioned, or I 100 percent agree that one of the problems isn't so much the He Man sideline is, is they didn't even get Tila right. Like they ruined Tila. They made and, and Sarah Michelle Gellar's voice in Tila does not work. Especially it does not even that fit design it. with the freaking. It does not. It does not work at all. Anyway, the the point of this, you know, is just the the damage control and there's just the dismissive attitude. It's not just this podcast. It's not just the tweets. It's not just the multiple articles and basically Kevin Smith trying to you know paint himself as being a poor victim mm -hmm. of a toxic fandom yeah, but he or was okay to attack guys I love it there was two people but I went after him because I could speak to that so I you know deliberately targeted us but he's never been nothing but nice to us yeah no that's he's, not true. he's the one that they kept dragging up we stopped talking about it multiple times and he dry here he, here he come dragging us back into it yeah so this is I mean the down votes I mean we're talking now it's it's even worse uh, Kevin Smith is losing subscribers on his channel. Um, you know, and again, it's not even this show. It's the credibility because the links that this guy it's is the going behavior to behavior, the behavior, yeah. it's, it's very obvious from this whole scenario that Kevin Smith has gone full Hollywood and he, and, like, and he's a Hollywood dude and now. his takeaway is he's attacking the fans. Cause now he's like, if you don't like my interpretation, you're not a real fan. Basically the implication is. Um, if you were a real fan, you'd know these things. So you, if you don't like it, then it's because you're not a real fan. And then they're talking about toxic fans. The same thing they always do. Oh, here comes the toxic fans, the alt-right, blah, blah, blah. Same bullshit. It's misogyny. It's whatever. It's, you know, come on. People are so over it. They've heard this a hundred times. They Yeah, it's just like we didn't... I guess, I guess what is so heartbreaking about this is of all the people in Hollywood that could have actually done right by a classic franchise, we thought Kevin Smith could have been... I want to point something out about that, that, too. He said in the video, well, if you don't like it, don't talk about it. I thought that was hilarious. Do we want to talk about that for a minute? Because Kevin Smith built his whole career on busting on Star Wars. Yeah, he did. He spent an awful lot of time 
you know, uh, uh, backhand slapping George Lucas. Movies and about, you know, getting their money yeah, back because yeah. the, the, the prequels are so bad, everything else. I thought, I thought if you don't like something, you don't talk about it. If you didn't like our tweet, why didn't you just not talk about it? You know what I mean? It's like... That's all he does, his podcast. That's all he does is talk about Holly, uh, Hollywood comic books, nerd culture. He's allowed to do it. Oh, he's he keeps, allowed and to he keeps throwing that grow like you said, grow up, grow up. Um, he keeps doing that, like you know, get making comments. But he's the one that's having the meltdown down like a big child, you know. But I love that. If you don't like it, don't talk about it. But then you can point back to him all the time. He talked about it when he didn't like other things. He built a whole career on it. Yeah, how many times has he bitched about Star Wars? How many times has he bitched about Batman? You know, uh -huh. I mean, uh, he he bitches about things that he doesn't like. He's built a career off of that that bitching. He bitched about He Man. Yeah, it's like, you know, dude, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I guess that's what what blows my mind about this whole scenario is like, you're in or were embedded in comic book culture. You know how nerds react when people fuck with their stuff. You know, you've reacted when people have fucked with what you liked. I honestly think he was hoping people Sorry, would get God. mad. I think he was hoping people would get mad and then he'd be like, oh, it was a big fake out. The problem is people are so mad and they're so mad at the uh, semantics and the, the trying to weasel out of, you know, oh, I didn't technically lie. I bet my daughter's life on it. Like, yeah, well, don't you, ever say something like why that, you'd dude. Why you say that? sometimes the universe has a way of... You would you better life on all the rumors you tell and your oh, videos God. that turn out to be untrue and that's okay when you do it? Um... But he should have known better. He should have known better. And if if this if this was just an elaborate trolling, which I th I think by the end of it, it probably is going to be the case. The damage is already done because of the the dismissive attitude, you know. And this, he this said, whole I went after them because I could I could speak to that. Yeah, but this whole video, the, all these articles, they've been dismissive. Oh yeah, He's, and now it's beyond us. It's fans in general. It's like now the fans are like, oh wow, dude, you completely are not the person we thought you were. Like you are a hundred percent Hollywood at this point. Mm -hmm. Like you're even like, yeah, we don't care about the fans bitching on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, we don't care about the fans. Whatever, they'll give her. Oh, it's just a toy show. Who gives a shit? You know? Right. Oh, well, it's okay to use you know random people on Twitter as meat shields because I'm Kevin Smith and okay, we got Hollywood deals. When he was so rah, pissed rah, about rah. Star Wars. Yeah. Right. I mean, this sent over to us from Sarah from a, a, one of the boards, and apparently. Um, this person has written uh, reviews and stuff, and every time they write something, it gets removed. So I'm going to let Neon read it. Okay, so this is coming from a, a longtime E-Man fan who was hoping to get our attention. I don't know why I think, I think he was hoping he was wrong, and he went, yeah. he went here because no one else would read what he was A lot say. of the He-Man boards, I guess, have been re removing it. We haven't been removing anything from our... I don't even... Half the time people put comments up and I, I don't read a lot of them because we don't have time. Mm -mm. But uh, this one, again, this came you through Sarah, so we got it. Uh, Dear Clownfish TV, I wrote this on Rotten Tomatoes and several other sites and it was deleted many times. I'd like to post it here as well and it reads as follows. Uh, what breaks my heart the most is I entered this uh, uncorrupted from any outside sources. I didn't get into Clownfish TV streams until after I saw the Netflix show. Now someone like me being on the spectrum, I tend to attach to characters from my childhood deeply. I can tell the difference between fictional characters and real people, but they fail to realize that even though I know they're fictional characters, I see cry, I still feel heartbreak, and it actually screws me up emotionally for days when I see my favorite characters get killed in the first five minutes. Uh, plus... With the added fact... With the added fact of Kevin Smith telling us all to grow up, well, I hope him or Clownfish TV sees this, and that is, Dear Kevin Smith, if we all grew up, you wouldn't have a career. Because last time I checked, your whole career was based on your love of childhood comics and nostalgia. You made bank off the comic book world. Why would you destroy something that we love just to laugh about it? Then call us toxic when we reject it. Now take this as you will, but I loved the characters of Masters of the Universe. I didn't mind Tila having a story. Um, but to do it as a side story or for its own show titled Tila, I don't care if she was a lesbian or whatever. I don't care. I don't care what King Grayskull's race was. I just wanted to see a good show. I was happy to see Orko, Scareglow, Manny Faces, um, et cetera, et cetera. But why call it He-Man and the Masters of the Universe when you should have named it Tila and the Masters of the Universe? I came into this happy and filled with joy only to watch it all and be left with my childhood bleeding on the floor while Kevin Smith, et cetera. It's like Kevin smith a tour. Oh, Kevin smith a tour, Like Skeletor. I get that. Yeah. I get that. Laughed over the corpse of my childhood. 
Thanks, and please don't make another season, and dear Hollywood, stop destroying what we love, because someday a fan who has nothing but love for their fandom isn't going to recover mentally because you chose to destroy it for them uh, to fit some stupid narrative. Some people attach so deeply to fictional characters that they can't tell the difference. You're not just playing with a cartoon character, you're playing with people's childhoods and the fictional worlds they use to escape from their terrifying and sorrowful lives. Uh, we come to these fantasy worlds to escape the world we live in, sometimes so please don't ruin anything else we love sincerely paul and every fan a lot of people had a lot of and this is this is why melanie Britt, the voice of shira got so angry about the marketing around shira and the princesses of power was the dismissive attitude toward fans mm -hmm. of the original show because those you know and and to filmation he man meant so much because they they were kind of like morality plays mm -hmm. you know they took it seriously like we're educated it wasn't just a toy show to the people working on it. it's like we're educating kids we're teaching them right from wrong we're teaching them what it means to have character what it means to be a hero because tila's lacking uh yeah and to see that just kind of you know and you can think whatever you want to about the old show it was cheesy it was for babies or whatever a lot of us that grew up with that show, especially if we were very young when it was on, like like we were, you know, we took a lot of those messages to heart. You know, it right. was like Mr. Rogers with muscles. And you hear, you hear, <laughs> like you know, Melanie Britt and other voice actors that worked on the show, or other people that worked on the show. They talk about how um, at conventions people come up to them all the time and tell them how how important it, the show was and how much it meant to them, and how like something that was on the show, they had something going on in their lives when they were a kid, something on the show, you know, helped them get through it, or you know, they were thinking there's something wrong with them, and then because of the message at the end, they realized that, that wasn't the case. I mean, they, they will tell you, like, all the stories and all the, you know, people, conversations, how much it meant to people. Um, and this was like, this is 30 some years later, people still are fans that's kept it alive this long. And then you think that if you change everything fundamentally, and if you'd said, okay, it's it's an alternate universe, it's going to be a different story, I don't think you'd get so much crap. If you'd said up front, it's a Tila story, you wouldn't have got so much crap. The fact that when it was brought up, you completely lied about it. And everything else, and now it's coming out. You're like, oh, it's for fans to take that right when it left off. It's really metal. It's all He-Man, and it's not. Even if you bring He-Man back in the second half, which I still want to say was colossally dumb to split it up into two seasons. If you're going to do that, because you're going to turn everybody off at yeah. uh, the beginning, um, it's you know, it's not He-Man. Yeah, they act like, well, you know, it's always He-Man because his friends are always important, and it's like, yes, we, they always were. We knew that, you know. I, I, but it wasn't. It was like for an episode or two. It was still his show. You literally took him out of his own show. And uh, so now we've gone from that, from these, you know, moral lessons about friendship and family and telling the truth and and uh, being a good person, good character, uh, being a, a good human being to Kevin Smith bragging about how He-Man eats pussy. Mm-hmm. I'm you sure know. that'll sell toys. I'm sure If that... you had a toy of that, it might sell. So. <sighs> All right, so we're gonna wrap this one up. Yeah, I'm just so I, I'm, tired of I'm it. Fucking we weren't tired. even gonna do this video, but he deliberately name checked us a couple times, and so you know what? I'm Whatever. so tired of it. it. It is what it is. We were not lying. I'm so tired of taking so much shit, and they're like, because well, because Clownfish TV said, yeah, what we said was right, and and even though we said something that was turned out to be true. We didn't make the stupid choices that put it in this position. That was all on Kevin Smith and the guy from Netflix and the guy from Mattel. Yeah. So good. Good luck with that. Uh, like I said, you've you've lost your credibility, regardless of how the show performs. Yeah, because he won't stop talking. Yeah. The other guys aren't talking. Well, the one guy started talking from Netflix, and then he looked like an idiot when he talked to the black guy. And now here comes Kevin Smith and won't shut his mouth up. Just you, what you're not hearing from is Mattel. Stop talking. Stop talking. And Netflix, if you're doing so flipping fantastic and wonderful and you think it's okay to not care about people who watch your channel, um, maybe that might explain why your numbers are flatlining and your stock shit. Yeah, because people get the vibe. When they know they're not being listened to, they, they, they know. And they take their money and they go someplace else. There are a lot of choices out there. Netflix is not the only game in town. Not anymore. Not anymore. So let's wrap this one up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.